boys are back. <laughs> a lot of people when they're doing cable, doing rear delt stuff, a lot of rear delt stuff in general, people have a hard time with. They get too jacked in their traps and they, they push out this way or they get too much length and they can't, they can't generate any power. It's just because they don't have a basis of, uh, it's like a structure you need to follow. So it needs to be a, a, like a form or a structure you need to set yourself in to be able to do these exercises. So if you have no comprehension of what that is, when you go to do the movement, it's gonna be lost to you. So like if I understand that like, if I'm gonna do a bench press, I understand if I think about doing a bench press that I would lower the weight and then I would push the weight off of me. This is my frame. Regardless of whether I'm holding weight, I'm not holding weight, I understand that this is the motion. A bicep curl is this. Right? I have this framework. For rear delts, people don't understand it because they've never felt the rear delt. It's behind them, they can't fucking see it, they can't fucking, all they have to do is feel it, right? So, to get to the point where we're able to understand that my arm is off my body, and this understanding that my, my body's still, but my arms can do whatever they want, so I don't have to pick these up and immediately get like this, or get myself in this position where I'm trying to like brace my neck, my arms can just hang here. One, the weight's too heavy most of the time. That's why you guys are doing that. This is on the, like whatever that is, it's two clicks, it's seven pounds, okay? I don't go higher than that, maybe three clicks. So if I'm setting this here, I'm understanding that I'm creating this framework where I'm pushing out on, my, on the edges of my rear delt with my hands. So the pressure is really here, I'm holding on in here, but I'm on the edge of my hand, right? So I'm creating this framework now that's sitting here. Whether I'm holding this or not, this is my framework. So I'm caved in on my chest and I'm elbows open here. So when I go to push across, I'm literally sliding across and back. I'm not trying to go, like, push this thing. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to understand that like, we're gonna show on an example. You guys wanna think like, if I'm standing here I'm, and there's an elevator door, I wanna stab my hands in between that elevator door, I wanna get leverage on my elbows and I wanna spread that elevator door open. Obviously the cable is gonna go this way. It has no other way to go. I can't push a cable that's diagonal across. It, I'll, I'll fall forward. But the idea in my mind is that I'm just spreading these hands apart and then I add in motion to it to get more leverage or more motion or more squeeze through my rear delt, right? So understanding that that's the end point, there's shit you can do like over here. This is like the most random fucking thing we did, I discovered, but you'd want there to be a gap. I wouldn't want to find something where I, my hands are like this and understand that I have no, I have no distance between my hands to create this feeling, right? So I'm doing this with cables and I'm spreading across. It's this is the, this is the frame I'm trying to create and push away. So in order to understand that frame better and understand it, I have to do an ISO hold. So it's not my fingers. I'm pushing out on the edges of the meat of my hands. I'm creating tension here. So I can create it here and I can understand where it is. I can back up and I can understand where it is. I can put my chest up, I can cave in. Wherever you personally feel your connection to your rear delt with my hands here and I can push out and hold. Obviously I'll never be able to open it, but right now I feel contraction here because I've created a, ste a steady line of tension out from my hand to my rear delt and I've caved in my chest. So I'm not gonna try and push this open with my chest. I'm gonna try and spread it with my hands and understand that my head is here. So I'm not gonna be here either. So I have to understand where do I feel the most tension in my rear delt when I'm pushing out here. Once I pull away from here, now I understand like, oh, it's just a continuation of that pressure. So now I can change my hang angle to here, it's the same thing. I'm just continuing that pressure open. So it's, understand you guys can find something with a gap, you can find a space between two walls. They even can be further apart. They don't need to be this close, they can be this far apart. Understand this feeling of pushing away without lifting chest or hunching over. I'm just pushing out on my hands. So we're trying to create almost this like swing effect. Like we said, I'm stabbing into an elevator door, I'm trying to spread it apart and see what's inside. It's the same thing if you're hanging over a dumbbell bench. If I'm hanging over here, I just always want to feel length in my arm and push away. But the thing is with that, when people hang over stuff and you see them hanging over a bench and they're doing these rear delt pushaways, you see them, they're gonna rock up and down. Rock up and down. You really wanna feel like the dumbbell if I'm hanging over, I'm trying to draw along the floor. So I'm trying to draw outward. I'm not trying to pull back to me, right? I'll do it for you guys. There's plenty of ways to do it. You don't wanna stand and fold over like that. If I create this pressure where I'm on the bench laying down, it doesn't really matter the angle as long as I don't bang on the fucking bench itself. I wanna feel this hanging here. So you notice guys will do this and they'll spread across. Right there, I'm already wrong. 
because I've already pinched my shoulders back and I'm pushing away. So yes, I can feel rear delt, but I'm getting a lot more scapula because I'm, I'm getting a lot more power because I can squeeze my back together. I want to feel this almost hanging feeling where like I'm tipping the dumbbell down away from me. So see how extended my arm is now? And I'm trying to draw a line outward. So the movement's not huge. It's not big at all. I'm literally just trying to open and then relax. Open and then relax. So my pressure, my pressure is down, pinky down, pushing out across. So I feel nothing but rear delt activate because I don't want this shoulder to do that. I don't need that. You guys can all do that. You've all felt pulling back and everyone's mastered that, but they hit this little area of our rear delt. I need this arm to be completely protracted out of, out of its socket and pushing away and pushing away. So there's no help from the back. There's no help from the chest. There's no help from anything. And these little tiny movements, you'll understand that framework better when you do things like that and you do things against the wall. So when it comes to the cable, you realize that you're just sitting on the cable. I'm standing on the cable and I'm doing the same thing I just did. I'm extending my arms out so I'm not pulled back. I'm here and I'm just creating movement off that. So I'm emanating movement towards you and falling back. Towards you and falling back. I'm not going or going and pulling back. You know what I mean? So try those tips. Wicked tips, you know? <laughs> what kind of music do you usually listen to when you're working out? Depending. Depends on my mood, but usually a lot of house music and a lot of like rock, gotcha. old school hip hop. I don't really listen to new stuff too much. By old school, I mean when I grew up, so I guess that's old, but. <laughs> 90s, 2000s, I guess. Does that change when you do cardio or is it the same thing? No, when I do cardio, I usually watch fucking YouTube videos or like fucking boxing videos or something. I need stimulus like to distract me. I don't like being in one spot listening to music and like not going anywhere. I'd rather be distracted by a visual. So depends though. Yeah, depends on what, how much pre-workout I took. Yeah. How sketched out I feel. I'll, maybe I might watch a podcast here or there, but like that's probably the only place I can watch a podcast yeah. is on the on the elliptical or in the sauna. I can't, like any other time of day, you couldn't pay me to watch a podcast. What's the longest you've been in the sauna before? Oh, just 20 minutes. I only do 20 minutes. It's fucking mental. I'm counting down the seconds before I can get the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> a lot of health benefits to it, so. Anyone who thinks they're gonna lose weight in it, that's a temporary thing, it's just water weight, but there's a lot of benefits for your heart and circulation and blood pressure, all kinds of shit, right, yeah. so. How do you feel about intermittent fasting? That's something you recommend if people try to lose weight? Fasting has its benefits, no doubt. I mean, people are reporting that it does. I mean, I don't, some people will disagree, some people will agree. I just, if it, if it suits your lifestyle, there's nothing wrong with it, right? I wouldn't recommend intermittent fasting for someone who's a competitive bodybuilder, or someone who's trying to get in a certain amount of calorie a day and their goal is to, to eat a certain amount of food. Like having that window be shorter to cram all that food in would be tough. So you're better, it's gonna be pretty tough on your digestion, but for your average person, I mean, if it helps you, I just trained a guy, my client, he doesn't do intermittent fasting, but he stays away from carbs till like later in the day, because he finds when he's at work, because it's a high paced environment, he feels like he's more focused when he just eats proteins and fats, right? So you're just gonna have to play with it and see what works for you. But in general, I've done it before, it helped me, but it just helped me because I wasn't, I dedicated myself to not stuffing my face for that period of time. It's just, I would normally have stuffed my face. You have like a preference on a morning or evening workout? No, that's all, that's all subjective to each person, right? It's also your schedule if you can't come in and work out later. And also like some people like to be in the gym when they have it, it's quiet and they can do their own thing, right? Most gyms around five o'clock, six o'clock at night after work time are ridiculous. So if you can get up and function at that time of morning and train well, go for it. I would. Build up muscle. Uh, they're trying to dirty bulk, uh, you know, and uh, increase their calories and stuff, but they're not seeing much change. Are they on steroids? Uh, no, I was just say it was just, just the. You didn't, you didn't give us an answer. That's a loaded question, right? So. <laughs> are you loaded or are you not loaded? <laughs> you have ammo in the gun or is the gun empty? When you're younger, you can get away with this like dirty bulk idea of eating kind of just whatever you want. I found that. As you get older, that's gonna come, probably come bite you in the ass. And it's like, if you can eat more nutritious food that you enjoy that actually tastes good, and it's actually a benefit to your body, like you're receiving nutrients from it, like probably do that. I mean, don't, don't, 
deprive yourself of good food and the opportunity to pig out now and then or have a big meal, like, but at the same time, like, everything in moderation is good, right? But if you're on juice, do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about um, people talking about sports using juice? What do I think about it? I think most people are. What do I ethically think about it? I don't, it's hard to say. I mean, a lot of the guys' skill level isn't really gonna be improved by the juice, you know what I mean? Like someone who's a super talented boxer like Terrence Crawford or Trevante Davis, these are smaller individual guys. Like doing juice as someone of that caliber or that size, like I could see it being helpful for recovery and like maybe things like that. But in terms of like, and maybe power when you do connect, but you have to still remember the person still has to connect, right? Like, yeah. That's the thing, that's the, that's the age old thing about Barry Bonds, is that Barry Bonds cranked a lot of home runs when he was juicing, right? But he still had to hit the fucking ball. It didn't help him hit the ball. Like, he's still a prolific hitter. It just, when he did connect to the ball, the ball went a lot fucking further, right? But if he had never hit the ball and struck out fucking 300 times that season, and he was on juice, he was like, oh, it didn't really matter, did it, right? But juice and gear in sports in general is far more prevalent than people think. It's in every sport. It, I'm talking down to tennis. Like, could, there's golfers that have been caught with fucking GH and all this stuff. Very famous golfers. So it's like performance enhancing drugs exist in every sport where someone's trying to be better than someone else, or someone's trying to be the best, or get a better time, get a better score, dominate someone more. Like, that's always gonna be the case. So if you live in a world where you think that isn't the truth, you're very naive, right? You're, you're still living with a childlike mind. That's what I call like natural bodybuilders, like grown children lifting weights. It's like, it still counts. I mean, some natural bodybuilders do look good, but they don't look as good as the fucking guys on juice. Like, and that's their choice. I'm not making fun of them, but be real with yourself. The best natural guy in the world couldn't hold a candle to the best unnatural guy in the world. If you're trying to keep up and be the be the best in the world, you're gonna have to do what it takes to be do the things the best guys are doing, right? So, what do you think about? Uh, so we talking about bodybuilders and the strongman division. What about them competing in influencer type of challenges like boxing? Thor and Eddie Hall box each other. That was, I wouldn't want to get hit by either one of those guys if they had connected with you. It'd be rough. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's fine. I think it's cool. I think more, I honestly think more guys that are heavily muscled, whether they're bodybuilders or strongmen or whatever, I think they should be doing more more active sports and like being being progressive in that. Like being, being big and strong should also mean that you're like big and strong and agile and like functional in the sense of like, yeah, you don't have to be doing CrossFit games, but like at least have something like you're not just a big ogre walking around that one can't defend himself and two is like scared of his own shadow. Like, or afraid to move because like, if I move more, I'll burn muscle. It's like, yeah, but like, what if it comes down to like, you and your wife are walking down the street and someone tries to mug you? Or like, what are you gonna do? Flex your bicep? Like, you're, ho you're gonna hope and pray that your muscles and your size are a deterrent. But people who know are like, that doesn't fucking matter. Like, especially if you are like, someone's coming at you with a gun or someone's being aggressive in your face and you realize at that point you don't have the, the ability to defend yourself or the people you care about, right? Like, you know I can't, what am I gonna do? If this guy throws a punch at me, I'm gonna get hit in the face. Like, when you when you realize, like you said, if you're a smaller guy and you're trying to develop dominance or you're trying to elicit fear, the quickest way to do it is to pull out a gun or a knife. Yeah. Most people, even if they know how to fight or they they think they're a tough guy, they're not a tough guy anymore. Yeah. Someone pulled out a gun on me and I was unarmed and I was walking down the street and they wanted my wallet, I'd be like, here's my wallet, dude. Like, I got fucked, my bad. Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Like, I'm gonna fucking try and disarm him like the fucking Detroit guy, like, get shot in the face over my wallet? Like, you can have my bank card. I don't have any money on me. Like, you don't know my pin, fuck off. These realistic scenarios where you might actually have to defend yourself or like defend someone else. Like, are you able to do that? Or you just walk over and be like, like, puff your chest like a gorilla and stand there and hope that they're scared of you. Like, most of these guys, to be honest with you, bodybuilders in general and kids who lift weights and are just super muscle bound, they really can't move, man. They have no cardio endurance. If they ever tried to like fight you or you got into an argument with them, just let them throw like two punches and watch them sit down winded. Like, you wouldn't even have to do anything to them. It's like, okay, cool, man. Like, uh, uh, but they're the toughest guys in the world because they think because they're so big that they're so tough, right? But when it comes down to it, it's like, 
you got maybe one or two shots at you. And they're gonna be these haymakers you throw from back here. And anybody who knows what they're doing is just gonna step back, step back, and then crack, and you're down. So it's like all that muscle ain't gonna help you in some situations. It helps you on stage, but not in life, man. He probably can't put his hands up to guard his face. Yeah, it's <laughs>